So a recap from our previous video, uh, we were talking about the electric field, which is this, uh, this, this field that exists everywhere in the universe. Anything that has charge adds to it, and then anything that has charge feels it. Now, in terms of the second half of this diagram, it feels a force, and very simply, this was the formula that always applies. So the force that a target charge feels based on the electric field it is currently experiencing is just its charge times that electric field. And it's either in the same direction as the electric field or it's in the opposite if this is a negative. Okay. Now, where did, those, where did that electric field come from? Well, again, it's created by charges that are in the neighborhood. And a single single uh, particle with charge created, creates uh, this much electric field, right? And it is pointing away from the charge. Um, yeah. I should say that, and I guess I didn't say this in the previous video, this Q could be negative as well. So, and I should just, okay, two things I want to point out that I uh, hadn't gotten to in the previous video. This is the source charge. This is the one, this is the charge that we're thinking of as creating the electric field around it. And then this is the target charge. This is the charge that is feeling that electric field. I should say that just with gravity, no, nothing feels its own field. You don't create a field and then feel that yourself. You only feel the fields from other, other objects. So there is a distinction between this Q and this Q. They're never going to be the same Q. Okay. Um, and the second thing I was saying was um, that I don't think I had said before was that this Q could be negative. So a positive charge object will create an electric field that points away from it. And as we said before, it gets smaller the further out you go because of the R squared in the denominator, right? But a negative one actually has an electric field that points toward it. Because if you multiply by a negative here, that flips. Remember, r hat does mean away from, but you multiply that vector by a negative and you're pointing toward. So it'll go like that. And, but again, smaller as you get further away. Okay. So I wanted to do uh, an example. Actually, one more thing. So if we put these two together, right, if we just link these two together, we would get that the force, which is the target charge times the electric field, and if that electric field is only due to one other source charge, then it would follow this formula. So that'll be QT times, and then it's this constant, times the source charge divided by R squared, R hat. And usually we put these two Qs right next to each other. Like that. So what this is, this is the force from one charged particle on another, exerted on another. Okay, and this is called Coulomb's law. But it's just putting together the two things we've talked about. The uh, the electric field created by a single particle with charge and the force that a particle with charge feels when it's in an electric field. Okay, so now let's try that out. Let's do an example. What is the electrostatic force between an electron and a proton separated by 5.20 times 10 to the negative 11th meters, which is about the radius of an atom? So, and this is the case, right? Like, say, in a, in a hydrogen atom where there's one proton and one electron, the proton and the electron are this far apart from each other. Now, a proton is positive, an electron is negative, and so it's an attractive force. And so we're going to figure out that the, the magnitude of that uh, force between them, and that's what's holding 
the uh, electron close to the nucleus, close to that proton. Okay, so we have a, an electron and we have a proton. And I know it, we you know, usually think of the electron as orbiting, going around perhaps. It's more complicated than that, but uh, here's just a little snapshot. So this is how far away we are. This is at one moment in time, the electron's over here. <clears throat> and let's see, so the electric field created by the proton is how big? Well, it's it's everywhere. It's everywhere, and depending on where you are, it's it's different strengths, magnitudes. But what is it right where the electron is? So at the electron's location. Let's figure that out, right? So that'll be Ke times the charge of the proton. I'll put Qp over r squared. Uh, and I'll just do the magnitude. I won't carry the r hat around. I'll just do the magnitude part of it. All right, so uh, 8.988 times 10 to the ninth Newton meter squared per coulomb squared times the charge of a proton. Remember that was positive. Uh, 1.60, I think I just said 1.60, but I'll throw in an extra significant figure here, times 10 to the negative 19th coulombs, all over, and then the distance is 5.20 times 10 to the minus 11 meters, and that gets squared. And that amounts to put into our calculators. Five point three three times ten to the eleventh newtons per coulomb. Now remember that will be pointing that always points away from the proton. That's going this way. That electric field is there whether the electron is sitting there or not. That's just from the proton. We haven't brought the electron in yet. Uh, we just happen to focus on the location where we know the electron is, but if that electron weren't there, that field would still be there. Now, what, f what force does that electron feel because it is there at this strength of, a, of an electric field? So force felt by electron so again, I'll just do the magnitude, uh, Q, E. So I take, this will be the electron's charge, which is the same thing except negative. Proton and electron have the same uh, size charge, they're just different signs. And then we multiply by the electric field we just figured out, 10 to the 11th. And we get 8, uh, negative 8.54 times 10 to the negative 8 newtons. OK. So that's the force felt uh, by the electron from the proton. OK. Now. If we had figured out the other way, what about, oh, by the way, and so, sorry, um, that will go this way, right? Because the E field is going to the left, and this is negative that, so it actually flips back to toward the proton, which makes sense, because when they're, since they're opposite sign, they should have an attractive force. So the force actually goes this way, toward the proton, and this is how strong it is. Okay. Now. That's the force felt by the electron because the proton is nearby. What is the force felt by the proton because the electron is nearby? So force felt 
by proton. Well, if you think about it, first we would figure out the electric field from the electron at this location, at the location of the proton. Um, and it will actually point this way, right? Because um, this is negative, so the electric field points toward it. That'll be the E because of the electron at this location. And we can figure out what that is. That'll be equals Ke times Q electron times R squared. And so it's the same numbers, right, except for a negative right here. So that'll be negative 5.33 times 10 to the 11th newtons per coulomb. So that negative means back toward the electron. And then the force that that proton will feel because it is experiencing that electric field will be QP times F. And when you multiply that through, it's positive 1.602 times 10 to the minus 19 times that negative. You get negative 8.54 times 10 to the minus 8. You get the same answer, which completely makes sense because of Newton's third law, right? I don't care what the nature of the force is, electrostatic or gravity or whatever, right? Force from A due to B, uh, excuse me, force on A due to B is equal and opposite to the force on B due to A. So it had to be the same, but I'm just showing you that the formulas do indeed uh, bear that out. So the force then will be this way, right? It's same size. So they are both, if you look at just the blue, just the forces, they are being pulled toward each other. That It's an attractive force, and that's what keeps them together. Okay. All right. Um, what is the electrostatic force on the 6E particle? So let's suppose we have a 6E particle. Maybe it's an ion that has <clears throat> lost six electrons. So it's got a plus 6E charge. And there's a plus 2E charge right here, and there's a plus 4E charge right here three millimeters up this way, one millimeter up this way. We want to know what the force is on this guy. So we have to figure out what the force is from this guy and from this guy, and we have to add them together. So let's do this. So from, uh, so force due to the 4E charge, um, it's going to create an electric field that's going to be pushing away from it because it's positive. Right, and that will be Ke times 4e. I'll just write e for the 1.602 times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs over, and then we have 3 millimeters, so 10 to the minus 3 meters squared. Okay, and then yeah, okay. So I'll just I'll just do that. Um, Oh, and by the way, let's see, that's pointing downward. So I guess that'll be actually, if we sort of think of uh, x and y axes on this, that'll be negative j, right? Negative j. The negative just because of the arrangement, not because of the charge is being negative. It's just because away from 4e happens to be downward. That's why it's a negative in this case. OK, so let's see, that will be. Um, Uh, yeah, negative 6.40 J hat. So that's the E due to this guy at that location. But there's E due, there's an electric field due to the 2E, right? Going this way. This is not as much charge, but it also it's closer, so I don't know how if this will end up being bigger or smaller than the first one we did. Due to 2E charge. So, uh, sorry, it'll be Ke times 2e all over, and then uh, 1.00 times 10 to the minus third meters 
squared. And again, away from 2e means to the left, so that'll be negative i hat, right? Okay, so that will be Uh, negative 2.88 times 10 to the minus 3 newtons per coulomb i hat and I'm seeing I don't know <laughs> I must have been talking while I was writing this one hopefully I said it right it was times 10 to the minus 4 newtons per coulomb j hat okay so there we go so yeah this one's a little bit stronger just because it was closer it was three times as close. So these are the two contributions to the electric field at this location. Of course, that means the real E is add those two together as vectors. So at 6E, the actual electric field is, and then you just add these two together. Now, um, one's I, all I component, and the other one's all J component. So adding them together is just uh, basically writing them next to each other. Right, we don't combine I and J, those are different components. Okay, so there's your electric field. That electric field would be at this location whether or not this particle was there. But this particle is here and will feel this electric field, so there will be a force, right? So the force will be its charge times that electric field. So we multiply 6e by basically this number of newtons per coulomb in each direction. I'll, I'll be lazy and not rewrite it. All right, so each of these numbers is getting multiplied by 6 times 1.602 times 10 to the minus 19. So that will give us Uh, negative 2.77 times 10 to the negative 21 I and oops sorry typo in my calculator let me do that again times 6 times 1.602 e negative 19 yeah so neg uh, 6 0.15 times 10 to the negative 22 and these this is uh, newtons right because this was newtons per coulomb and we multiply by coulombs and so there we go so that is the force at least in component form right and if we wanted to find the magnitude of the force right we would do Pythagorean theorem The negatives won't matter here. So this will be the actual magnitude. And I am getting 2.84 times 10 to the negative 21 newtons. So that'll be the strength. Okay, so that's the strength of this force. Everything's positive, so all everything's repelling. Nothing got flipped back toward uh, the other particles. Um, and I won't do it here, but of course you could also find the theta. You could do the inverse tan thing and find the angle, either from the horizontal. That's probably the most standard thing to do, figure out that angle. So all the usual stuff you can do with vectors. Okay.